In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his goodness and his mercy that he shows to the human family through bringing to us what is called divine revelation through the mouth of his prophets and messengers. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Allah. As a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, who came among us and searched among us and raised from among us one to lead, teach, and guide us in the pathway of God, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I want to first thank the laborers of Mosque Maryam and to thank the visiting ministers from the West Coast and and from other places as well. But thank you for coming. Um, it is a bit chilly. I understand that something happened to the boiler. So we're going to have to replace it um, so that you will be more comfortable next week, uh, God willing. I hope that what we are about to say to you will warm your hearts yes, and, and cause you to forget yes, if it is a little chilly. Yes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me once, uh, if you want to teach a subject, don't bother to build up to it. Go right to the point that you wanted to make. In that way, you could get it over in a few minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to get right to the point. The point is, as you know, for the last uh, three or four Sundays, I have been dealing with the knowledge of God, the coming of God. In order to be successful in establishing truth, we have to be imbued with the Spirit of God. Otherwise, the persecution that follows revelation will prove to be too much for us and we will give up the truth to seek some comfort from those who would persecute us for the sake of truth. There is no such thing as revelation coming to a people that that revelation is not followed by persecution, by insult and injury and torture even, in prison and even death. But those who believe in the message and the messenger, I mean really believe, they are imbued with a kind of spirit that no matter what persecution they receive on account of the word, they get stronger rather than weaker. They get bolder rather than more reticent. And they have the spirit of a warrior. 
They want to fight for the truth and fight for the establishment of a truth that would set their people free. Now, this is why the scripture says many are called, but only a few are chosen because many will know it's the truth and, and love it, but they won't have the strength to stand up for it under persecution or even unto death. So this particular prophecy in Isaiah, where it is a, it is a forecast of this one that would come at the end of the world of Satan. And he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach glad tidings or good tidings unto the meek. I don't want to waste a lot of time. But it's talking about you. It's talking about the black man and the black woman of America who are meek in terms of how we face the onslaught of our enemy. And we are weak in terms of our inability to cast off the yoke of our oppressor. So the glad tidings to the meek is that the end of your oppression has arrived. And the end of your oppressor has arrived. That's good news. And the most beautiful part of this is that the God who is prophesied to come, comes, is present, and chooses a foolish people. Well, that's us. I'm not trying to put us down, but we are definitely rather foolish. It's not your fault. We were made foolish by our enemies. But he said he would choose a people who were once a great people, but are no people at all now. He would take the bottom rail, bring it to the top, make the last the first. And then he says, thou shalt no more be the tail, thou shalt be the head. This is all talking about us. Now, as a black person or a Negro, African-American, whatever you want to call yourself, colored boy, now you have such a poor view of yourself. Though you pray more than others, you go to church more than others, you shout more than others, you believe more deeply than others, yet you don't believe that God would come to you, that he would choose you to bring a revelation to you that he has kept from the wise and the prudent men and the rulers of this world. So because you think like that, it is very difficult for you to see your value in this time. No people in history has ever undergone what we have undergone. We have showed a tremendous ability to bounce back from the worst form of slavery and oppression. Well, this tells us, as the Bible again teaches, that you were not chosen for your righteousness. Because you know we are of the righteous, but we're not, we're not acting that way. It says, you were chosen in the furnace of affliction because the furnace was designed for you to purify you and, and me and to make us the type of standard by which you would measure value. This is why the Bible talks about his coming would be as a refiner's fire 
and like fuller's so because you are considered like gold that you got to find in the depth of the earth but gold has to be purified of the dross that is on it that it will shine and become a standard of value well you are that people that are like gold in the sight of God and the prophets even described you in that language but like gold that is found has a dross on it that it has to be purified from that it may become a standard of value there's a dross that 400 years under our slave former slave masters and their children has put on us that a furnace of affliction should purify us from and this makes it easy to understand why God chose us now wait 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 I have some beautiful Muslim uh, brothers uh, here uh, who may be uh, from the Arab world or from the Muslim world we know that when Allah chose the Arabs he chose a people that were nothing they were ignorant they were divided they were steeped in filth yet it was the choice of Allah to raise Muhammad from among them and give them the greatest revelation that had been in the world up to that time the revelation of this book Quran now we see after this book was revealed Islam captured the known world but then the West was discovered by the Europeans and the Europeans have built a world now that has literally overtaken the world of Islam let's agree with truth yet Allah says in the Quran that he sent his messenger with the guidance and the true religion that he may make it overcome the religions all of them but we know that Islam has been overcome by the powers of the Western world why is that it's because the book is here the revelation is here but the real essence of the meaning of the book is yet to come the book is designed to destroy Satan's world the book is designed to prepare the believers in this book for the hereafter which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said means here here on this earth after the destruction of the power of the wicked to rule a whole new world will come to the earth understand now 